Welcome to S2 and this video on two-tailed tests from hypothesis testing. Now, two-tailed tests aren't any more difficult than one-tailed test in reality, but there are two things that you need to make sure you are careful of. Number one, and the most important one, is that for a two-tailed test, you need to halve the significance level. So if it was a 10% significance level, you'd half it, and it's 5% for each tail. If it was 5% significance level, you'd half it, and then it would be a 2.5% significance level for each tail. So that's the first thing you need to be careful about. Now, the second thing is that, in general, you'll only be testing one of the tails, unless you have to find the critical regions of the tails. In general, you'll only be testing one of the tails. And sometimes it's obvious what that is, whether you'd be testing the upper tail or the lower tail, and sometimes it's not so obvious. So as a little bit of a hint, use the expected outcome. Okay, that expected value, that mean value. So if it's binomial, you do n times p. And then look at that value, that will be your expected outcome. And if the value you're testing is greater than that, you want to test the upper tail. If the value is less than that, you want to test the lower tail. Okay, that should save you a little bit of time. I mean, if in doubt, you can always test both tails. You know, if you, in the stress of the exam, forget, test both tails, take you a little bit longer, but not too much time. And, you know, you can't get marked down for testing both tails. So don't worry about it if you do forget, but that's just a little bit of a hint to helpfully save you some time. Now, next thing to think about is how do I know that I want a two-tail test? Well, in one-tail test, we were always looking at whether something's improved or gotten worse, which is why we were looking at the one-tail. So like the probability has increased or the probability has decreased. With a two-tail test, we don't know whether there's an increase or a decrease, say, to the probability for looking at a binomial distribution. So instead, we have to just look for a change. And that's the type of word we were looking at within a question. So, you know, something like over a period of time, there's been this probability of a defect within a manufacturing processes, I don't know, 0 0.025. The company does a few changes and they want to see if that probability of the defects has changed. So they don't say that it's gotten either it's gotten worse or better. Okay, they've just asked if it's changed. So that would mean then you want to do a two-tail test because you don't know if there's been an increase in the probability or a decrease in the probability. Now in terms of how that looks in for your hypotheses, so your null hypotheses and your alternative hypothesis, well, say we got H0, and let's just say this is P equals 0 0.4 for argument's sake. Now your alternative hypotheses, if it had been a one-tail test, it would look something like this less than 0 0.4 or it might have been a greater than 0 0.4 depending on if you're looking for an improvement or not for two tail tests it simply does not equal 0 0.4 okay so it doesn't equal 0 0.4 so it's an increase or a decrease and finally again just a little bit of additional information if you're looking at a binomial and probability and the value, the observed value, ends up being in the upper tail, that means that the probability has increased. If that value, the observed value, ended up in the lower tail, the lower critical region, then that probability would have decreased. So just a, a kind of little bit of extra information there. 
Since there is very little difference between this and one tail, let's get stuck into a couple of examples. Now here's quite a basic example, but just remember that if you have a bit more of a worded question, like I would expect to see in an exam, you should start by saying what your distribution is like, what is X, what is P, before you jump in with then your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Here they're given to us because it's a straightforward one. Okay, you can see that this will mean two-tailed test. Okay, and we can see 10% significance level, so that would be 5% per tail. So this is now 5% per tail. So assuming that H0 is true, is always going to be my first kind of step here. That would mean that X is binomial where N is 25 and P is 0 0.3. Our observed value is 10. And if you're not sure which tail to check, because you can see 10 here, we've got 25 values in total. It's not always obvious. So work out your NP, your expected outcome. So 25 times 0 0.3. And that gives me 7.5. 10 is bigger than that. So we would be expecting to test with the upper tail. So what I'm going to test is the probability that X is greater than or equal to 10. So that actually means I want 1 minus the probability that X is less than or equal to 9. And here you can see the value of the 9. So we've got 1 minus 0.9287. And that is 0.0713. Now we can see that this is greater than our 5%. Therefore, there is insufficient evidence to reject H0 or something along those lines. I always aim for two sentences at the end. One where I just talk about whether I'm, there's insufficient or sufficient evidence to reject or H0 or even if you want to talk about H1. It doesn't really matter which way around you do it. And then the second sentence, I'd always link to the context of the question. In this, the question has no context, so I've just put, so no reason to doubt, p equals 0 0.3. But if it did have context, then I would explain what it means within that context. So here we have a more worded example. So we've got a machine makes glass bowls, observed that 1 in 10 of the bowls is, has small cracks in them, so P equals that 0 0.1. The production process is improved and a sample of 20 bowls is taken. One of the bowls is cracked, so test at the 10% significance level. The hypothesis that the production, or sorry, the proportion of cracked bowls has changed as a result of the change in the production process. So because it says has changed rather than increased or decreased, then what we need to think about is a two-tailed. So two-tailed. So now we're looking at a 5% significance level. We're dealing with NMP, so we know it's binomial. So here we're looking that x is the number of cracked bowls and then we have p probability that a bowl is cracked. So next what I want to do is think of my hypotheses. So my null hypothesis h0 is going to be p equals 0.1 and my alternative hypothesis H1 will be P does not equal 0 
Now remember that my significance level in this case is 5% because we're looking at two tailed. Now assuming that H0 is true, we have that X is binomial, N is 20 and P is 0 0.1. And I want to test the x value of 1. One of the bowls is cracked. Now, it should be obvious, but just to check the expected value in p, 20 times 0 0.1 is going to be 2. The observed value is 1, so we just need to look for a lower tail. So very simply probability where x is less than or equal to 1 and you can see it here so it's going to be 0 0.3917 it's a huge value it's clearly bigger than our 5% therefore there is insufficient evidence that the production process change has done anything to change the probability so my two questions, two sentences, I should say, insufficient evidence to reject H0. So, and then link to the question. So the proportion of crack bowls remains unchanged. So what happened there? Missed out the D. Okay, that's one way of doing it. The alternative way, you know, at this step level would be to look for my critical regions. So look in here, you know, we can see that there is actually no lower tail in this case, no lower critical region. And there is an upper critical region. You can see from here, it's going to be a greater than or equal to six. So the critical region would be six. So you can do it that way as well. And that's all there is really to it. Um, I've just given just four questions going from easy to, well, they don't really get hard, I don't think, but that's just obviously my opinion. But just uh, a few questions. They're all just binomial, just to practice the two-tailed tests. And as always, the answers are at the end.